we have seen so many salts, some soluble and some insoluble in excess of NaOH. Similar manner, we can also test it out with ammonium hydroxide. Let us consider in the same sequence, magnesium chloride MgCl2 treated with ammonium hydroxide. This is also known as liquor ammonia. Treated with it will give you ammonium chloride along with you will get MgOH twice that is magnesium hydroxide. Again it is a precipitate and you know what you have to do? Put an arrow downward. Magnesium hydroxide, it is a dull white precipitate, insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. That means what do you notice? This salt, magnesium chloride, is insoluble, the precipitate of it, in both the cases, sodium hydroxide as well as ammonium hydroxide. Now do we take the second example, that is ferrous sulphate. Ferrous sulphate treated with ammonium hydroxide will give you again a precipitate of ferrous hydroxide along with ammonium sulphate. Ferrous hydroxide again it is dirty green or you can say light green in color again insoluble in ammonium hydroxide similar to what you have seen it in sodium hydroxide. We take another one that is ferric chloride again treated with ammonium hydroxide will give you ammonium chloride and ferric hydroxide. You people must be knowing it, ferric hydroxide. What was the color in the case of sodium hydroxide? Reddish brown, right? It is similar to it. It is reddish brown only. Again insoluble in ammonium hydroxide. So what do you notice? Magnesium chloride precipitate was magnesium hydroxide. Ferrous sulphate, the precipitate was ferrous hydroxide. Ferric chloride, the precipitate was ferric hydroxide. All these three precipitates are giving you the same color in both the cases with sodium hydroxide as well as ammonium hydroxide and all three precipitates are insoluble in both the cases that is sodium hydroxide if you add excess at the same time excess of ammonium hydroxide. Now let's take the fourth example. We take copper sulphate and treat it with excess of ammonium hydroxide. You will get ammonium sulphate and copper hydroxide that is UOH twice. Again a precipitate. This copper hydroxide, it is pale blue but it is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. Now you do one thing. Take this precipitate along with ammonium sulphate and put excess of ammonium hydroxide in it. The moment you add excess of ammonium hydroxide, the whole solution will now become inky blue, dark blue, indicating the presence of tetraamine copper sulphate. The formula for which is Cu bracket NH3 4 SO4 that is tetraamine copper sulphate giving you an inky blue color. Now note, this can be one of the test of testing the difference between sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide. In the similar manner, you can do one more thing. You take only the precipitate that is copper hydroxide and treat it with excess of ammonium hydroxide. Again you will get inky blue, but this time you will not get tetraamine copper sulphate. Instead of that, you will get tetraamine copper hydroxide, but the color remains same. Similar manner, zinc sulphate, when treated with excess of ammonium hydroxide, first it will give you a white gelatinous precipitate of zinc hydroxide along with ammonium sulphate. Now this zinc hydroxide which is a gelatinous precipitate if you add excess of ammonium hydroxide to the entire product you will get a colorless solution of tetraamine zinc sulphate similar to what you have seen in case of tetraamine copper sulphate but that tetraamine copper sulphate was 
dark blue that is inky blue in color whereas tetraamine zinc sulfate is a colorless solution you can do one more thing take only the precipitate of zinc hydroxide and put excess of an ammonium hydroxide in it you will get again a colorless solution but this time it will form tetraamine zinc hydroxide it is colorless solution not a precipitate Now let us consider the effects of hot concentrated alkalis like sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide on some of the metals along with that we are going to see the effects of the same alkalis on the metal hydroxide along with its oxide so let's begin with the first metal itself that is zinc zinc when treated with sodium hydroxide that is naoh sodium hydroxide which is also known as caustic soda when treated with zinc will give you sodium zincate along with that you will get hydrogen gas which will be liberated sodium zincate has the formula na2zn O2. Now, as you know, you have to balance this equation. So, you already know how to balance it. Now, we can take the hydroxide of the same metal, that is ZnOH twice, treated with same alkali, that is NaOH, will give you sodium zincate, that is Na2ZnO2. Along with that. this time it will not give you hydrogen gas it will give you water h2o you know how to balance this equation similar to what we have been doing it now we can take the amphoteric oxide of the same metal that is zinc oxide and treated with the same alkali that is naoh will again give you the same product that is sodium zincate na2zn O2 along with water. So what do you have noticed? If you take the metal, you get the gas hydrogen. If you take hydroxide or oxide, you will always get water along with sodium zincate. Now let us take one more metal that is lead, Pb. Again treated with the same alkali NaOH, you will get sodium plumbite that is Na2 Pb. O2. Now you know which gas will be using out hydrogen, right? So whenever an alkali is always treated with a metal, will always give you hydrogen gas. Now take that same metal hydroxide, that is PbOH twice. Again treated with NaOH, you will get sodium plumbite. You are right. Along with what? Not gas. This time it will be water. say no similar manner you can take the amphoteric oxide of the same metal tell me what it will be pbo right do it with naoh again you will get sodium plumbite now you tell me what should you get ah you are right it will be water again